Hi there my peeps, I'm Marty and today we are going to go through the 24 books that I have read so far in 2021. I don't know if you remember me, um, it's been a while. <laughs> Hello. I used to upload and I want to get back to it, so here we are! In this video we are talking about the 24 books that I have read in 2021 so far. And before we get into each individual book, I'm going to go through some stats with you guys. I heard a total of 5,283 pages which for each month is for January 1398, February 986, March 1491 and for April 1408. My average page count per month is 1320.8 pages and my average page count per day is 44.4 pages. For ratings, uh, my ratings, it's some good, some bad, kind of average. I have given out I have given out five five stars, five four stars, nine three stars, two two stars, one DNF, and two books that I have not rated. My average rating for all of the books that I read is 3.52. And for each month, my average rating score like this. For January is 3.8. In February, it was 2.83. <laughs> yeah. That was a shitty month. For March, it was Again, 3.8, and for April it was 4.2. I have read quite a wide range of genres. One poetry, one romance, one classic, two science fiction, two non-fiction, two magic realism, four graphic novels, five contemporary, and and six fantasy books. The age categories that I have read within are three children, five middle grade, ten young adult, and six adult. 13 of the books I read have been parts of a series and 11 books have been standalones. I have reread one book. The method that I've been using to read these books are three physical, four ebooks and 17 audiobooks. You can see that I get most of my reading done on audio. It's just the way I am. Now I'm going to get into each book that I read, tell you what I thought about them. The first book I read in 2021 was down Among the Six and Bones by Seanan McGuire. This is the second book in the Wayward Children series, which is a series about children who goes through portals to these magical worlds and come back. In the second book, we follow Jack and Jill, who are twins, but one of them is raised to be really girly, doesn't really do much, and the other one is raised to be like a like, tomboy, really like, mm -mm. and they find a portal into this magical land and it's their story. It was okay, it was enjoyable. I like the progression of Jack and Jill throughout the book. I don't really have much to say on this book. Um, I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars and I'm super intrigued to read the rest of the books in the series. They're super quick, super easy and the second book that I read was Paper Girls Volume 2 by Brian K. Vaughan. The Paper Girl graphic novel is kind of like a graphic novel about these paper girls, like they deal with the newspapers in the morning and they get mixed up into some sort of scientific, time travel, madness. It's super fun, it's super adorable. I love these characters, I am adoring the story so far and there's like at least I think 17 or 18 volumes out so far, I don't know if it's completed anyways. I read the first volume last year and I absolutely loved it. The second volume wasn't quite up there but still I loved it so much and I am super excited to continue reading this comic series. The third book that I read this year and the third book that I read in January is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. Really intrigued to read like Concrete Rose because it's like kind of the backstory of Star's parents, Marik and can't really remember her name from The Hate to Give and you follow Marik as he finds out that he is a teenage dad and how he like adapts to that new world of his. I loved it. I love Marik. Marik is like one of my favorite like book characters ever. Like I love, and I really want to see like more stories from like this universe of characters and people because they're so intricate and I think that they can have a lot of good stories to them. I gave Concrete Rose a 5 out of 5 stars. Fourth book that I read this year was Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. It is the second book in the Dark Artifices series. No, it's not. <laughs> it is the second book in the Infernal Devices trilogy by Cassandra Clare, which is her 
second series within the Shadowhunter Chronicles. It is like in the chronological sort of story, it is the first series. And you follow Tessa in the first book, who goes to London and gets kidnapped and figures out that she is part of this world of demons and Dunwalders and Shadowhunters. And I thought that Clockwork Prince really didn't do much for me. Nothing much happened. It was quite boring. I didn't, I don't know. It's, I don't have much to say on it. I gave this a three out of five stars and I will continue reading the Shadowhunter books. Um, just because that I want to and it's they are funny books. The fifth book that I read in January is Nightbird by Alice Hoffman. This is a story about Twig who lives in this town with her mother and her brother. But the family has a curse and when a new family moves in next door Trig kind of befriends the youngest girl and they want to break the curse on Trig's family. I found this to be super cute, it had really good character dynamics, I enjoyed the character of Trig and the other characters which you know I can't remember the name of because brain. It was quite good and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. The sixth and last book that I read in January is Wizard of the Feminist by Shumada Nagosi Adisha. This is a non-fiction about why we all should be feminist. It's it really tells like how the world is and looks upon like why do we do these things as women when we are just as powerful and strong and mindful as a man. The author's views on womanhood really isn't that great. Um not gonna go into that. Even though the author is like not a good person I still enjoyed this non-fiction and I do think that some a lot of people will get something out of it and because it is a non-fiction I have not rated it. Now we're moving into February which you know I read six books again and it was a tragic reading month because I read nothing about three stars. The first book I read was The Snow Dragon by Abby Athelson. I don't really have much to say about this it was kind of like it was like a 20 minute long audiobook or like 20 pages long ebook. I don't remember if it was an ebook or a book. No, it's been a while. I kind of like wrapped it from my memory. But it follows an orphan girl who goes on an adventure with a snow dragon. It was cute. Yeah, that's all I have to say about it, really. And I gave that a 3 out of 5 stars. Second book that I read in February was Snow White, a graphic novel by Matt Fallon. This is a graphic novel retelling of Snow White set in like 1920s New York. I really enjoy the setting of this and I really enjoy the art style. Um, the story is really like classic Snow White, you know, that story. And I thought it was okay, I enjoyed it. It wasn't anything special. It was a retelling of Snow White that didn't really bring anything much to the story. And I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. I didn't realize during a date that I was talking about the wrong book for the next book that I read. I said that I read Snow White by Hans Christian Andersen, which is not true because Hans Christian Andersen didn't read Snow White. I read The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. This is a story about a boy and a girl and the boy gets a shard of ice in his eye and gets kidnapped by the Snow Queen and it's a story about the girl trying to rescue him. It was cute. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. I read those three books for the Polarathon hosted by Jade Rye Reads, which happened at the first week of February. Next book I read was a disappointment. I read The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This is the story of a teenage boy who is coming to town with his black queer identity. He discovers drag racing and becomes the Black Flamingo and through this he like explores himself and discovers himself as a person and this is a book written in verse and usually I do a lot of books written in verse, I love poetry, I love all of that stuff but this one it didn't really hit it for me, it really it didn't really do much for me. It was enjoyable. The story of the main character really was something to itself and I really enjoyed that but it was nothing amazing. I didn't love it. It just it was just okay. I liked it and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. A really short 
children's book because they needed for reading challenge. It is called Kung After Sleeder or Charlie by Peter Gotton. It is, I think, it's originally Swedish. Yeah, it's originally Swedish. I read an um, Norwegian audiobook of it. It was bad. It was funny. I gave it a two out of five stars. Don't have much to say about it. And the last book that I read in February was Amulet Volume 8 Supernova Kasi Kibushi. This is the eighth volume of the Amulet graphic novel series and I really do love this graphic novel series. Even though I don't give the volumes any more than like three stars, I still love it because it's so funny and adventurous and there's so much going on and this follows stone keepers and the stone keeper follow in the story is called amelie they end up going to like her grandfather's house and then they get mixed up into this magical world and they find out so much more about him and he wasn't really the person that they thought he was. Now we're moving into books that I read in March. The first book that I read in March was a self-care book. It was a non-fiction self-care book. It is called The Little Book of Self-Care for Taurus by Constance Stellas. I want to know how to like take more care of myself and this story, or this story, this book explains how you can take care of yourself according to the stars. Um, there are books published in this like compendium thing, if you can just call it that, for each star sign. And I am a Taurus, so I read a Taurus part of this thing. It was really creepy seeing how true the statements of a Taurus is. And like all other like star stuff. It was crazy. I really recommend that you read the book that corresponds to your sign in this compendium non-fiction self-care exploration thing because I do think that you will get a lot out of it. The second book that I read in March was This is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Mota. Did not like this. Like it is a really weird science fiction kind of fantasy-ish time travel story about these two detectives that live in different times and send letters through each other's through time and like live letters and it was it was weird I did not understand it and I didn't enjoy it didn't like it gave it a two out of five stars then I reread The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis I've been rereading The Chronicles of Narnia for I think two years now like I do reread them quite slowly like I fit in a book here and there when I can get into like kind of get into like a reading challenge for readathon like when I want to feel happy. This is the sixth published book in the Chronicles of Narnia, but it is the third story in the chronological story of the series. In this one you follow a boy and his horse who wants to travel to Narnia and they meet a girl and her horse. I love Narnia, it's, it holds such a dead place in my heart. I watched the Lion Wars and Raja so many times growing up and I listened to the audiobook of the Lion Wars and Raja numerous times. I like I bought the audiobook and I would listen to it on repeat. It would go on repeat all the fucking time. A really cute installment in the series. You get to see, you know, the main crew. You get to see Lucy and Edmund and Susan and Peter. It's nice. I loved it. I get a four out of five stars. Then I read The Witch Doesn't Burn This One by Amanda Lovelace. I mentioned earlier that I love poetry and this I love. It is the second installment in the Woman as Some Kind of Magic poetry trilogy and it's just a collection of poetry that tells you why women are magical, like we are magic, we rule the world. It's really good and I enjoyed a lot of the poems in here. Like, some I hate, some I misses, but overall I really, really love this and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. And then I read The Unhandamonious by Christina Lauren. This was my first dip into Christina Lauren. I've heard much, much, much good things about them as an author duo. I wanted to try them. I'm not a huge romance reader. This is a story about two people who hate each other but then go on their friend's honeymoon because the rest of the wedding party has gotten food poisoning. And as you can imagine, they fall in love because it's a romance. I don't know if romance is for me, like I enjoy them. I find them really weird. I don't think that I want to try more romance books, but I don't think I need to like figure out what kind of romances I do want to read. 
and I gave the Hannah Moonis a 3 out of 5 stars. Then I read Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This is a story about a boy who goes into an elevator to avenge his brother's death. Um, and on this elevator journey, he meets people on all the floors who have had an impact on his life. He want to do this because the rules goes as follows. Don't snitch. Don't cry. Get revenge. And that's what you want to do. You want to get revenge. It was really heartfelt. I absolutely loved it. It's a book written by us, you know. I really enjoyed the desperation in the main character. Where it was like, and then when he understood what was going on. Which I'm not going to say what goes on, but you should read it. And I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars, of course. Moving into April. The first book I read was Solitaire by Alice Oseman. This is my second Alice Oseman book that I have read. The first one I read was Raid of Silence. I read it last year. I really enjoyed it. This follows the main character Tori and yeah, she has some struggles. She doesn't really have many friends. Like you follow her and her life and her story. And there is a new boy at school. And they developed this kind of bad friendship, but I really enjoyed the friendship they had. And I enjoyed the dynamics between the characters. In this story, you also meet Nick and Charlie, who are the main characters of Alice Oseman's graphic novel series, Heartstopper. I really want to read Heartstopper. I really enjoyed the story. I had a good time reading it. This was a really warm story, but it also had its ups and downs. And it had tragedies. It was heartfelt. It was... I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the story. I get a 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Girl Who Fell From The Sky by Heidi W. Barrow. This is a debut YA novel about a mixed race girl who lives with her grandmother and she is the sole survivor of a family tragedy. You follow her struggles being a mixed race girl in the 80s with influences from both her family, like her grandmother, her other family, her friends at school her teachers and like you see them you see her grow up you see her develop and it was really enjoyable i quite enjoyed it i love this story i loved how you got to see things from past and present and you got to see things from different characters within the story and it was nice seeing how it all like wove together i get the girl who fell from the sky a four out of five stars. Next book I read in April was A Tangle of Spells by Michelle Harrison. This is the third book in the Queen of Magic series following the Virgin Sisters. You follow the three sisters, Betty, Fliss and Charlie, as they try to break a curse that is on their family. This curse led it so that they are not able to leave the island that they live on. The story has progressed. I love this story. At the beginning I was like, oh, I don't really know about this one. But then it was like, I love this. This is amazing. This is like mm, top tier. This is my favorite of the series so far. I think there's coming more books. I really hope there's coming more books because I want more stories from these characters. And I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. Then I read Binti by Nadia Korofor. This is a futuristic science fiction fantasy-ish novella-ish thing, book, story. I don't really know how to explain the story. Um, I found it to be quite weird. I had to read it twice because the first time I read it, I had no idea what I'd listened to. It was like, I started the other book and I was like, you and I listened to the production of blah 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 blah. It was really weird. I enjoyed it. Like, it wasn't terrible in any ways. It was quite enjoyable, but it was so weird. Like, super weird. And that's the only thing I really have to say about this one. It was weird. I don't really remember what it was about. Like, it was about this girl who wants to go to this school. I get a three out of five stars. Then, the last book that I read in April, and the last book that I'm going to be talking about in this video is Strange Planet by Nathan W. Pyle. This is a super cute, quite funny, and really like humoristic look on the human everyday life. You follow little blue creatures you follow little blue creatures who go through everyday human life, but they talk about it in a really literal way. 
like when they talk about kissing you don't oh i'm kissing you no they say i'm breathing air into your mouth because like that's literally what you do you breathe air into the other person's mouth i love that it was so funny i read it when i wasn't really feeling good and it made me feel so much better it made me laugh you get to find out from stars now that was the 24 books that i have read so far in 2021 i think that if i should pick out some favorites there would be Crockett rose by Andrew thomas the long way down by jason reynolds and a tangle of spells by michelle harris and those are like my favorites Oh, and Strange Planet by Nathan Dolan Vile. Okay, those four. Those four are my favorites that I read so far this year. Hi there. I forgot to talk about a book. Um, I also read or I DNF'd House Moon Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. Did not like it. Did not enjoy it. It was horrible. Low intrigue. The characters were terrible. I didn't like it. Bye bye book. If you enjoy this video and want to see more of me, I hope that you will click the subscribe button down below and wait for my next video. Well, I hope you had a great time. I hope you're having a good day and I'll see you soon in another video.